Hi, everyone. I'm Paul with Madcap Software. Conflicts, source control conflicts. That's what this video is about. And these are things that people who are working on a project with other writers, and you're bound to source control, you're trying to synchronize at the same time, you got changes, the same file, same place, and it just collides. And you got to tell the system what you want because you can't do both. So nobody likes these things. I can't stand them. Uh, you're just working along fine. And then all of a sudden you get the message saying like, hey, you got a conflict. You got to deal with this thing. So if you're a solo writer, you're probably going to have an easier time moving through all the source control stuff that you need to do. But if you're working on a team, these things are just inevitable. Uh, but you can do some things to limit these. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to take a look at some of the more common conflicts that you'll come across and how to deal with them. And then in the final video in this series, in tips, tricks, and best practices, there will be uh, a few things that you can do to help just even limit the, the occasions when these happen. All right, let's jump right in and start taking a look at these things. Now I'm going to begin by looking at conflicts that happen in content files. And by that, I mean topics and snippets, uh, those things that have HTML markup behind the scenes, because these are the files that you're gonna be editing most of the time. And so this is where most of the time when you have conflicts, it's gonna be in these kinds of files. So I'm gonna keep this very simple, just go in, show you the UI when this happens and what you can do. Got my little project here, branching demo. And uh, this is me logged in to Madcap Central. It's bound to Central, so we're using Git in here. Source Control Explorer. If I come in here and I look at branches, I've got these branches. Feature three is one in the previous videos I didn't have. Only the other writer, Jeff Lebowski, had it. So I went ahead and got it from the remote location so that we could both be working in feature three. And it is my active branch. So let's go over to the other. Um, the other project. So this is uh, the copy of the project that Jeff Lebowski has. You can see he's signed in here and going to see his branches. So he's got feature three in here too, and it's active. Okay, so let's begin. Let's make changes in uh, Jeff's files. Go into the Content Explorer. I'm going to expand this folder that has our feature three topics. And I am going to go into topic G. Okay, and what I'm going to do to begin underneath the heading, I'm going to add Jeff's name. That's all I'm going to do. Just that. Save it. And I am going to uh, commit this, and I'm just going to put Jeff's name in the comment. And commit it and do a sync. Okay. So the idea here is that both Jeff and me, uh, both of us, Jeff and I, had started the day and did a poll. But then we got busy and we uh, started just doing work and we both tried to sync, but Jeff got his change in first. All right, so now let's go over to my project, feature three, let's go to the same topic in here. And I'm going to put my name in here, but I'm gonna put mine at the bottom, okay. Save this and let's commit it. And I'll put my name in the comment. Commit and sync. Now we both added content to the same file, but this is going to work just fine. This isn't going to result in a conflict because these changes happened in different places in the topic. And so Flare and Git, they're able to handle this. They're able to go, oh, okay, I'll take Jeff's change and I'll take your change. There, you know, there's room for everybody in here. And it works. Now, if I go back to the other top, to the other project, he doesn't have my name in there yet. He needs to do a poll, of course. So he'll do a poll. So we're all synced up here. Okay. And you'll see just a minute, there's my name. All right. So let's do something different now. So let's both add our names in the heading. So first of all, I'll add Jeff's name. And I'm also going to add another line of text here, another change from Jeff. 
And then that's it. That's all we're going to do there. I'm going to save this. We've got our file change we need to commit. And let's just call this Jeff2. Commit it. And we will sync it. And once again, Jeff's the first one. So his changes are going to go through smoothly, no problem. All right. Just about finished. There we go. I'm going to go back to my project. Okay, back in here, I am also going to add my name into the heading. And I'm going to add another line of text down here at the bottom. Another change from Paul. Okay, save and commit. We'll just do Paul 2 in here, do a commit. And now we're going to sync. This time, it's not all, it's not going to be all fun and games. I am going to sync. And the reason it's not all fun and games is because of that heading, because we have changes in the same place in there. So it's going to bring up the, it's going to try, it's going to try to pull this stuff down, but it is going to bring up this dialogue and say, hey, you got a conflict. So this is what happens. Now, I just have, I just made a change to one file. So you're only seeing it listed here. If I had conflicts in multiple files, you'd see them all you know, you'd see multiple ones listed. And then you would just go and resolve each one. So you get a couple of options down here, auto merge all and resolve. Well, auto merge all, it tr you can attempt to do, you know, have it automatically merge, but we know this isn't gonna work because it's what would happen is it would try to try to do it and bring up another message saying, hey, you still got problems. And it's that heading. It can't auto merge that. It doesn't know what to do. So you have to click resolve. And it brings up this dialogue. Now, this gives you other options. So first of all, we can open the merge tool and merge changes manually in there. That's what we're going to do. We also have the options in here to undo the local changes. So I could, you might do this, for example, if the other writer just made tons and tons of changes in that file, and you made just one teeny tiny little thing. And you go, well, it's easier to just undo my changes and then I'll just manually make my change again. I know exactly what it is. You could do that. Uh, you could do the reverse of that, which is undo, discard their changes, and you take your changes. But we're going to open up this merge tool. As soon as I click OK, you get this. So this lets you deal with the conflict. And you got three main sections here, this one right here, and then the one on the right, and then the one at the bottom. So. This is uh, the area up here in the upper left, that's you. And it says local right there. So these are your changes and it's showing you the differences between what's on the remote. These are Jeff's changes. And then down here is what the final resolution is gonna be. So you can think about, you can think, think of this like two people going to court against each other, they've got a dispute. And then this is the judge down here. And the thing is, when you're this, when you get the di this uh, dialogue, you're not only this person, but you kind of you get to be the judge too. You're Judge Judy, and uh, so don't get too excited though, because if if the other person had gotten the conflict, then they would be Judge Judy. So it's important that um, authors talk to one another, and if you have a conflict that uh, you need to talk through, you, then you can figure out what you should do about. It what you should do about it. All right, so <clears throat> the other thing about this dialogue is you can see you've got some stuff up here at the top. One of the nice things about getting a conflict in Flare is you get to see it in this sort of WYSIWYG view. What you see is what you get. Whereas if you were to do, uh, if you were to deal with one of these conflicts in another tool, like if I tried to do this in Visual Studio, I would see the markup. You can switch to the markup by clicking this right here. And so you can see all the tags and everything. And then you can just toggle back to this. So uh, a lot of people just like it uh, like this because it's easier for them to read, see what's going on. Um, so if you are using another tool, you just have to be aware that you um, are, are going to be seeing those tags. And it's probably easier when you're dealing with a content file as opposed to one of Flare's other special kinds of files because you're going to see some unusual tags in there that you might not be used to. You're also going to see this legend up here in the upper right. 
So this color coding shows you when you have something highlighted, what's going on. And so green is new, red's deleted, blue is changed. This shows something that's been moved from one place to another and the diagonal lines show a conflict. And so what we have here on our heading is blue because that was an existing heading, but we, it changed, but it's also got the diagonal lines. That's our conflict, that's our problem. But it also shows down here under um, the heading, we've got this green part. So this is new content that Jeff added. And if I scroll down on the left, there's content that I added, it's new content, but it's not conflicting. So it doesn't get the diagonal lines. We don't, it's just going to work just fine uh, if, we, if we want to just have it merge it automatically. So the way you deal with the conflicts is you, you, can, you can actually just type down below or you can select the one that you want. So if I clicked this right here, this icon, it's gonna add my name, but I could come down here and I could maybe do a compromise and just add and Jeff. So kind of get both things here. And notice that it also, when I did that, it added another change from Jeff right there. And it added another change from Paul right there. Just put those in because no problem. Uh, if you've got multiple conflicts in a file, you can use these to go from one to the next. And then when you're all done, you just click OK. And you might get this file, this dialog that lets you know, hey, I'm going to create a backup of this thing just in case. And you can click OK. And it says everything's good. So if, uh, if I had multiple files, I would need to go through you know, the others, but I just had the one. Now it also lets me know that, hey, you resolved conflicts, but you still need to do a push. That's what you started to do when you hit this problem is you, um, <clears throat> you, you had the conflict, but now you've resolved it, but you still got to push. And now you can see in the topic that it's all this stuff that we did in that dialogue. And down in the lower, right, you can see we've got this commit thing. It's got a number and this that's letting know, me know that there's stuff I need to sync. Thing is, if I, if I were to just click sync in here, it's going to remind me that I haven't committed yet. And it's going to, do you want to commit now? So that's nice. It's a nice reminder. And you say yes. And if you do that, it also puts in the comment automatically for you if you, if you do that. Comment, uh, commit of conflict resolution on branch feature three. And you can type more in there if you want. And so we've got this and we just say, okay, let's commit it. And it automatically brings this thing up because we were initially trying to do a sync. And it's gonna go through and pull and push. So we've dealt with our conflict and now we're just getting it up remotely so that Jeff can pull it down. So let's go over to his project again. So all he has is what he left off with, you know, the changes he made. As soon as he does a pull, he's going to get the whole, you know, the whole enchilada in here. He'll have the modified heading and the additional text below. All right. So that is an example. That's actually a real simple example, but that is the process you go through. That's the UI that you're going to see when you're dealing with uh, these, con these uh, content files and you have conflicts. So content files, that's where most of your activity is, but there are some other files in Flare where multiple authors are working a lot and you could also have conflicts. And so in this section, I wanna talk about tables of contents, TOCs, and what's, what that's like when you hit conflicts. So let's go into our projects and check that out. So let's go look at our TOC in this. Again, we are still in our feature three branch and we've got a couple of TOCs. Let's go into the online TOC and it's pretty simple in here. We don't even have uh, our new stuff from feature one and feature three. We don't have any of that in here. It's just real bare bones. So uh, I, I could go in and add all of this stuff for feature one and feature three into the TOC, 
Um, most likely the feature one stuff, because that was merged from earlier branches, if I had gone, you know, done a lot more work in that, I would have probably put the feature one stuff in here. So it would already be in here, but we don't have it. That's okay. I mean, this is just for the exercise of showing what happens when you get uh, conflicts here in the TOC. So first of all, let's do this. I am logged in and this is my project. And so I'm gonna drag topic G and I'm going to put it right here. Okay, so you can see it's automatically showing the heading in there that we had, and I put it above FAQs. Okay, and now I'm just going to save that and do a commit. And let me just put Paul um, TOC as my comment. And I will sync this. Same thing as the content files. I uh, just happened to get my changes up there first. But we're going to have Jeff Lebowski go in. And he is going to also make a change to this same TOC. So that's all done. Let's go into his project. Okay, let's go into the project organizer, TOCs online. There we go. And Content Explorer, I'm just gonna drag this over. I'm gonna drag over a different one and I'm gonna put it at the very bottom. Okay, so you can see I, I was messing around with some uh, text in the heading earlier. And so it <laughs> picks all that up. That's a great heading, isn't it? All right, so I am going to save this and do a commit. And I'm gonna do Jeff TOC. Commit that and sync. And what do you think is going to happen? Well, it's a similar thing as the content files. Even though it's the same file, this is in different locations. And so this actually works. So it's going to go through and it's going to merge these things. And it's going to bring in my link right here. And it's got his link there. And of course, if I go back into my project and I do a poll, I am going to get his uh, link, topic link in here. So now what we're going to do after this, there it is. So there's his. So what we're going to do now is we're going to force a conflict. So let's do a different one. Let's do company. And let's, uh, oh, actually, company's already in there. Let's. Uh, Okay, yeah, let's do, which one is that? That is topic G. Let's do topic H. We haven't done that one. Let's do topic H and let's drag it right here, right under getting started above that first one we did. Okay, so it does that. And we're going to commit and we'll do Paul TOC2 as our comment, commit it and sync. First one to push up to the remote, so everything's fine. What we're going to do is have Jeff Lebowski. I know he goes by the dude, but I'm just calling him Jeff. And uh, we are going to have him put a link in the same location. So let's go into his project. All right, go to the Content Explorer, and let's drag this top one right here, Feature 3 Topics. Let's drag that directly under getting started. And we will save, do our commit. There it is. Had to refresh. And let's do Jeff TOC2 and commit this. Now, this time we're going to get again the conflict when we try to sync because it just doesn't know, you know, they're both in the same location. One could go above the other, but Flare doesn't know. So it's gonna ask me, what do, what do I wanna do? Again, you can try auto merge all, but we know that's not gonna work. So let's click resolve and same thing, same options. You can use the merge tool. You can undo the local changes or, the ser or discard the server changes. We're gonna open up the merge tool. So you can see this is different from before. It isn't, 
it, there is no way for it to show the TOC the way that you're seeing it in, uh, in the flare and the, in the other UI. So it's just showing you these tags and they are, you know, different from what you're seeing in a content file. So it's showing us, okay, we got something new, the green, and it's a conflict. So we get the diagonal lines. And if I scroll down, you can see that's all it is. It's just that one thing. And then down below, this is where the final answer is going to be. So what you do, it's the same thing. You just click on the thing that you want. So, uh, but you can actually click on both. So I'm going to click on this one first and it adds it right there. And so you just have to look a little bit more closely to see what's going on here. And that, that's this one feature three topics. That was that uh, one added. And then this one, if I click that, it adds that one as well down below. And that's the topic H. So the first one is going to go on top and the second one's going to go below it. So it's a little bit different in here. And again, if you were to get this in another application, you probably would just have to, you'd have to copy the tag uh, or probably you'd have to copy it up, you know, up here and paste it down there. So it's a little bit more work in there. Uh, but this one solved it. So I could have just selected one of these, but I ended up selecting both so that they're both in the TOC. And now all I have to do is click OK. Again, we get the backup thing. And it says it's resolved. And it reminds me, oh, you got to push, man. So I say OK. And in the TOC, you can see that feature three topics and topic H. These are the ones that I, I resolved, right? So once again, uh, I've got my commit here, but I can just go on in here because I've it, it, it's showing numbers here as well. I can click that and it reminds me to do my commit and it puts the comment in there for me. Nice. And click commit. And now we're going to do our sync. And you know what happens next. We go back to Jeff's project and we do a poll so that he has the TOC as well. So let's just wait for that to finish up. It does. Let's go to his project. Or actually, <laughs> I was in I was in his project. I'm getting these mixed up. So I need to go into he was the I got mine in there first. He resolved it. So this is his TOC. So we need to go into my project. And so I just need to, to do a poll here. And it's going to bring in that other link in here. There it is right there. So it's all synced, resolve the conflict. Now, um, there are, if you think, man, I don't, I don't want to always be trying to resolve conflicts in the TOCs. There are, there's something that you can do. I'm going to talk about that in the next video and tips and tricks. But I wanted to show you that you actually can go in and resolve these things. Uh, probably easier to do it in Flare than if you're using another tool. Now, another type of file that I want to go through is a micro content file because conflicts can happen frequently there also. Um, maybe micro content isn't familiar to you. You're, you're just not sure what it is. Well, if that's the case, actually, it's something that you should check out because it's really, really cool. I have a whole series of videos on micro content. Um, so it's a really, really neat feature. Uh, but again, the reason why I'm even bringing it up here is because like content files, like TOC files, a lot of activity takes place in these and it's just treated a little bit differently. These, um, the content files, TOC files, micro content files, they're all sort of similar when you get these conflicts, but there are little differences also. So let's go in and let's see what happens when we have a micro content file conflict. All right, so once again, I'm going to start with my project. I've added a micro content file here. It's under my resources, micro content subfolder. And if I open this up just to show you what it's like, it's this. So it's 
I just have one phrase in here, and this is content that goes with that phrase. And as you add more micro content, you get more phrases in here. All right. And uh, you can also see it, what's going on behind the scenes. I'm going to right click this and select open with internal text editor. You can see this is what it looks like. So the, um, the tags are just a little bit unique in here. And this is my phrase micro content. And this is the content that goes with it. All right. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to I'm, I am going to go into a topic and I'm going to add a new phrase and content that accompanies it. So let's begin by going into this reference section. I'm going to go to company and uh, we've already done some stuff in here. I'm going to select this and all these variables. I'm going to go into the home ribbon, select create micro content, and I'm just going to put company info in here. And that's going to create my micro content phrase. It affects the, co the company topic because it adds a tag in there. So that's, you can see that file's changed, but it's also added this new phrase in here. And there's the content that goes with it. If I select that phrase, that content goes with it. Now notice that company in, in, in case, it doesn't have to be case sensitive in case you're wondering, looking at this. But notice that company info alphabetically comes before what is micro content. Uh, but that doesn't matter in the, the markup. So if I look at the markup once again, you're going to see that micro content alphabetically comes first. Here's company info down here. Uh, so the most recent thing gets added at the bottom. And that's important in this um, thing that we're going through because both of these authors are going to try to add something in it and it gets added to the bottom. And then when you try to sync, Flair doesn't know what to do and you have to tell it. So uh, made the change. Let's go ahead and commit. And I'll just call this, um, I'll just put in the comment, Paul micro content. Okay, we'll commit and sync this. Same situation as the others where I just happened to sync first. And uh, Jeff Lebowski, our other author, is going to make the change, but didn't do a poll uh, from the remote before he made his changes. So that is all finished there. Let's go in and look at Jeff's project. So in his project, and just to, just to remind you, we are both working in the feature three branch. That's important. We're both in the same branch. And uh, I'm going to open up micro my micro content. There it is. So that's the original file. It doesn't have the other changes uh, that, I, that I made yet. So he's going to go and do his own thing. He's going to open up tips. And he's going to, I'm going to right click on this paragraph tag next to that. Lower mip some text and create new micro content. And I'm just going to name it tip and click OK. And again, it makes a change here. So that file's changed. This file's changed. Tip alphabetically is before what is micro content. I'm going to save this. But if I were to look in the, oops, open with internal text editor. Tip is down here below, it's at the bottom. Okay, so need to commit and we'll call this Jeff micro content. Commit, and that works fine, but it's when we try to sync that we're going to get that conflict dialogue. There it is. So again, auto merge all isn't going to really uh, do us any good. So I'm just going to click resolve and select merge changes in merge tool and click OK. Brings this up. So it's like the TOC editor and that you just get this markup and the changes are here. There's the new content. It's a conflict diagonal right there. 
So this is the tip one, this is the company info one. And then down below, this is what you're gonna end up with. So you can select one or both of these. And the first one that you uh, select is going to go right under micro content. And then the next one will go under that. So I'm gonna select tip and it adds it down here. And I'm gonna select the company info one and it adds it down here. All right, all done. So now I click okay. It's gonna make the backup. We say, okay. It says all conflicts resolved, okay. And it reminds me I got a push still. I resolved it, but still got a sync. So, all right. So now I have all three in here. Company info, tip, what is micro content? I'm gonna do, a, I'm gonna save this. Uh, or maybe I didn't need to save. <laughs> but let's go and look at the micro content file. And you can see there's the micro content one right there. There's tip and there's company info, one after the other. So it synced them like that. So we need to do a commit. So it modified our company topic. And so I'm just gonna do a micro content phrase in there, commit this. Now we can do our sync. And once again, we are on Jeff Lebowski's project in here. So he is, he's done the conflict resolution and he is syncing and that's all done. So now we can go back to my project and I still have the two in there, but as soon as I do a poll, I will get all of this. I'll get the third piece of uh, the, the third phrase. There it is. Okay, so just a different kind of file, a little bit unique there too, but uh, between content files, TOCs and micro content files, that's gonna get you a, lo a lot of the way there. Now, before I end this video, I do want to go back into Flare and just take a look at some of the other files in there and talk briefly about those. So we've covered content files, TOCs, micro content files, but you, you know that there's a whole lot more in there. Uh, in the Content Explorer, you got this resources folder, so you can see all the different types of files in there. Um, you know, template files, those are, that's another kind of content file, but you also have your style sheet files, page layouts, images, things like that. And then in the project organizer, you've got a lot of different files in here too. Under the advanced, you could have any number of things. There's a language skin, but you could have context sensitive help. There's condition tags, there's you know skins, targets, variables. Now, what I want to just let you know is that some of these are, it's just gonna be rare that you get conflicts because some of these things, you set them up um, and you don't really go back in there all the time like you're working with these other files and you're making changes to them. So uh, not there's no, no need to be overly stressed about that. Some are probably gonna be more likely than others. For example, I could see if you had a, alias file in the advanced folder for context sensitive help, and you're doing a lot of context sensitive help, it's possible that multiple authors could be adding phrases, adding new um, context sensitive help IDs, I mean, in there. So that's gonna be more common than say, uh, creating new condition tags, because creating condition tags, you usually just kind of get those set up and then every once in a while, maybe you add one, but it's not something that's going to be as likely that multiple people are doing at the same time. So, um, and, and each one of these, if you were to open them up in the text editor, you're going to see they have their own kind of unique uh, markup and everything. So when you do have conflicts, it's going to be more similar to when you had your, uh, when, when, when I showed you the conflicts for TOCs and micro content, it's gonna be more like that. Then when you, then the content files, you're not gonna see a WYSIWYG uh, in there. You're gonna see the, the markup. But there are also some things that you can do proactively to limit 
conflicts, not only with these sort of um, more rare files that you might have conflicts with, but, but Annie, there's some things that you can do. And I'm going to actually cover that in the next video when I talk about tips, tricks, and best practices. So there you have it. Uh, look at conflicts, source control conflicts that you might come across when you're working in your Madcap Flare projects. Uh, so as you've seen, content files, that's mostly what's going to happen, but also TOC files, micro content files, just whatever you're, uh, there's a, wherever there's a lot of activity between multiple authors. And so what I would recommend that you do, if this is sort of new for you, you know, create uh, some small projects, maybe you and another writer, and you kind of go through some scenarios, it's, it, it will make more sense and you'll retain it better once you start doing, doing this hands-on and you, uh, you just you know, understand the reasoning behind things and, and what to click and when. Um, also, check out the next video, the last video in this series, because again, I am going to cover some things that will hopefully reduce the conflicts that you have, because again, nobody likes conflicts, especially me. All right, so I will see you in the next video then.